First story. OP's boyfriend's family lost their home in a fire accident, and they are asking OP to put her name on a mortgage loan. She thinks it's too much to ask. I've been dating my boyfriend for almost four years, and we've been together for about two years. I'll cut to the chase. His family mom, dad, and sister suffered a house fire in January, and they stayed with us in our one-bedroom apartment for a couple weeks until their insurance got them a hotel. Now they are in the hotel. His family had ten cats, and nine of those cats are in the apartment with us currently. So it's me, him, and nine cats right now. They pay for the food and litter, but I've bought them a cat tower and some toys. They've basically destroyed my couch. But I figured they would, and it was a cheap couch. This past Sunday two days ago, they went to see a realtor to talk about buying a house. Where they lived was a place they rented for a decade, and the landlord was pissed about the fire, so they don't want to go back there even when the house is fixed. My boyfriend was supposed to be the one on the loan, because his parents aren't citizens, and would have to pay out the a uh, on a down payment. But since he has a social security number, he can get a regular rate. The problem is, he doesn't make enough on his own. If I went in on him for the loan, our combined income would be enough to qualify. If I go in on the loan, we could stay with his family in the house and save for our own home later. We'd have more space, which would be great because I'm trying to start a business, and I wouldn't be living in the one bedroom with nine cats, but it's also a 30-year mortgage loan. He has told me that whatever I decide to do won't affect our relationship, but I'm afraid this will be for me. If I don't decide to go on the loan, his parents said they'll get a trailer and take the cats, but his sister 19 would still probably end up living with us because her job is close to us and she doesn't drive. I feel like I'm losing it. I feel like no matter what I do, I'm losing something. I'm so conflicted. I've asked the advice of my mom and some friends, and they think they're asking too much. But if I don't go in on the house, I'm still in this apartment that costs too much and adds an extra person to our space. So I'm asking, should I just let them put my name on the mortgage loan? Or should I accept that his sister will be living with us? I hate to add any more elements of stress to their lives, because they've already been through so much. But now it's leaking into my life a lot. My boyfriend's family suffered a house fire, and is asking me to go on the loan with him, so they can get a house. If I don't, they'll get a trailer for themselves and their ten cats, and his sister will live with us. Help me pick my poison. Edit. So this got a lot of attention fast. I'd like to clear up that they aren't pressuring me, but it's obviously a tense situation for them, because, you know, it's their housing in the line. They're just kind of at the mercy of insurance paying for their hotel. It's a desperate situation, and a desperate ask. I will talk to my boyfriend today about different options. I spoke to my mom, who is a homeowner, and she advised against this, but seeing all of your reasons as well, like not being able to get a second mortgage because of this one, is a nail in the coffin. I'll suggest his sister stay with us as long as she is looking for another place of her own, and I'll encourage her to maybe look for a roommate with a good friend of hers. I knew this would be a risky move, but seeing how much it really takes from me no, I will update later but have peace of mind that I will not be taking out a mortgage for his family. Edit. This house would be in my name on the deed. The cats are not, destroying my apartment, as so many people are assuming, just the couch. I obviously care about these people, which is why I would even consider it. So please stop creating a story in your head, where I'm some sucker wanting to be scammed. Comments. Barink. This is a terrible idea. Do not do it. They were renting before. They can find another place to rent. Do not make this your problem, Jimmy Sabirchin. Do not do it. I'm sorry for your BF's family, but don't do it. This can easily get you trapped. If you consider it, meet with a lawyer and get a contract that is for your benefit and doesn't leave you with the costs of all this. What if you do it and your boyfriend leaves anyway? Anyway, that sounds very fishy to me. If you were my client, I would tell you, as an accountant, to stay away from this. You are just the girlfriend. And you are in a position to easily abuse and use it. Mysterious ad 70 461. Plus, OP can't save for a house while living with them if she's holding their mortgage. Not many people qualify for two mortgages, and she'd have to pay the higher rate for a secondary home. Update. One day later. So I was not expecting 1 in 300 people to find so many different ways to say no. I'll be honest, I was not inclined to sign anything. Not because I didn't think his family would follow through or anything. I just knew I didn't know enough to make this decision. Homeownership is a distant thought right now, at the age of 25. I came here hoping to see if this is something people actually do, and what it would mean for me and my boyfriend if we did. The obvious risk was, what if we break up? But I knew there was more than that, and you all made that clear. First things first, no mortgage. I made that post yesterday morning, 
And after reading through the comments that actually gave insight into something like this, I realized, yeah, there is no way we can do this. I wish it was a viable option to solve their current problem, but it just isn't. Fortunately, by the time I got home after work and talked to my boyfriend about it, he also realized this was not a good idea. I was glad I had the foresight to make us wait before giving his family an answer. It just stunted too many of our own opportunities for the future, so we were both on the same page about it, thank God. Someone mentioned that you can learn a lot about someone by how they handle the word no, and I can say that I didn't really learn anything, but just confirmed suspicions I already had. His mom was very understanding, and I don't think she even understood what she was asking when it came up. After my boyfriend explained it to her, she told his dad, who is not his biological dad, or even his stepdad, just as mom's longtime boyfriend. This matters for the next part. His dad did not take it very well. Before any of this, my boyfriend's parents told him they would help him get his credit up so he could take in the loan for the house. They'd help pay off his credit card and obviously front the money for the down payment. And they said even if we didn't help with the house, they'd still do that since he's helped so much already coordinated with the Red Cross to get them assistance after the fire, helped wrangle the cats, housed the cats and his family, went with them to the realtor. As I suspected though, once we made it clear that it was not happening with the mortgage and how it would damage our future chances at a home for ourselves, his dad wasn't happy. When his mom asked if they would still pay my boyfriend's credit card, his dad said no. He didn't help us, so we won't help him, is how he put it, apparently. Yeah, like I said, my boyfriend's family is dysfunctional. I can't say I've ever had the most respect for his dad, but he's been there for most of my boyfriend's life. I have lots of thoughts about how this should go, but ultimately we are just going to try problem solving in different ways. Definitely no rushing into quick fixes. Maybe be less ready to help so his dad can see what that's actually like. Also, a note to you all as a collective. I understand that the world is full of cruel people. But I think a lot of you missed the context of this situation when you cast judgment on his family's intentions. This is a family that has been displaced by a house fire. They are immigrants who aren't completely and perfectly savvy about all the logistics of buying a home. The reality for a lot of immigrants is that they do rush into terrible solutions because they don't always think they have another option. They know they have fewer resources because they lack citizen status, and it's not uncommon for children to help their parents in extreme ways. And that doesn't just apply to immigrants. There are people all over the world taking extreme risks to try and better their situation. But since they have lived so long needing to think on their feet, they don't always feel like they can afford to look for other options. All that to say, practice a bit more compassion. I understand that this was too much of a risk for myself, but that's not going to stop me from helping them where I can. Comments. PM Mayor Chihuahuas. As a child of immigrants, I get some of the concerns. However, my parents bought and sold houses several times before they became citizens including new builds. It's not impossible for immigrants if they have legal status here. More difficult yes, but non-citizen immigrants buy homes in the West all the time. OPO oh, for sure. My mom is an immigrant, and her parents owned a home before becoming citizens here with my mom's help, I'm pretty sure. I think she would send them money sometimes. I know it's not impossible for immigrants to be savvy, but I've met plenty who are not. My mom currently works with families who have recently moved to the US to help register their kids for school, so I meet a lot of people in a variety of situations. It was funny seeing comments from people saying, that's too many people in one apartment. I've met people who share a one-bedroom apartment with a whole other family. Two families in one apartment. All I know is that some people have to work with what they have, and I can't knock them for trying. St. Blaze. They are immigrants who aren't completely and perfectly savvy about all the logistics of buying a home. The reality for a lot of immigrants is that they do rush into terrible solutions because they don't always think they have another option. You're giving at least one person too much credit. Your boyfriend's mother's boyfriend knew exactly what he was asking for. OP. Did that man know it was too much? Maybe. But I personally don't put a lot of stock in his character either way. So I think it could be both ways. I do think people can be selfish without understanding what they're asking for. Second story. Fiancé snapped, and OP is unsure if she is overreacting. My fiancé and I have been together for three years and have been living together for two years. He's definitely a hothead. It's been a problem in the past, but he's a wonderful partner otherwise. He cooks I clean. We both work, and we're best friends. We spend all our spare time together going on road trips, trying new foods, or just hanging out. He has in the past lost it over small things, followed someone home twice over driving, and yelled at them. He's an angry driver in general. He thinks no one can drive and is often speeding through traffic. 
His angry driving is an everyday occurrence. I let him drive because it's not worth the stress if I drive because he doesn't like it. He punched a hole in a closet door after a stressful day at work, and I sarcastically replied to his mood. He immediately apologized when he calmed down the next day, but it scared me at the time. This was a year ago. His temper is an everyday thing, but it's never directed at me. He also used to tell me to pack my things and F off if we were arguing. I'm definitely calm. Let's talk this out. He's an I don't want to talk about it person. He often feels attacked, and it's something we had to work through. He's much better now. He tried anger management, but said it wasn't working with his work schedule. His communication is much better. Apart from that, he's an affectionate goofball who treats me like a queen. He would do anything for me. I just have to ask. It's like a different person takes over. Oh, to the incident. We were going on a holiday this week, a 12-hour road trip, and we decided to leave at 3 a.m. He was sad he didn't sleep well, and I annoyed him because I wasn't ready quick enough. I wasn't. I forgot some things, and I admit that I took too long, and we left late. We stopped an hour later to grab a quick service station meat pie. I don't really remember the conversation leading up to this. I don't even know if we were arguing. All I know is that his meat pie leaked onto his shirt. He swore, ripped his shirt down the middle, like a hulk, and threw it out the window. He proceeded to speed, and had the angriest look on his face. I was scared. It was a dark back road, and I could see he was doing 140 km. I told him I was scared and to stop, but he ignored me. I told him to please calm down and stop. Suddenly he slammed on the brakes, and all the things in the back flew forward. He turned to look at me and said, There, before taking off again, only faster at 160 km. I sat there terrified to speak up again, and that we would hit something. He stopped not long after, and told me to drive because he was going to sleep. He woke up two hours later, and didn't say anything about it. It was an hour or so after he woke up, and he said sorry about before. I was really tired. I'm in shock. He doesn't seem to think it was a huge deal. It's been two days, and we've just moved on from it. He said nothing happened. And he knows how to control a vehicle, so why would he put himself in danger? I just need some advice. I'm starting to rethink this whole relationship based on this incident, because I'm scared to tell my friends, because they will hold judgments against him. Update, I'm so completely overwhelmed by the response from this group. I never thought I'd receive so many helpful and worried comments. I have four more days of this trip, and since so many are telling me to be careful, I am not going to do anything until I get home. You've all shown me, it's time to tell my sister and brother what's going on. They live in the same city. Thank you again for all your help. I feel so rattled. I've never once thought it was abuse. I just thought he needed help and support. Comments. Staff the donkey. Nope. I'd be out of there. And please stop prefacing with, he's a good guy. No, he is not. He has explosive anger issues that he can't control and unleashes by getting physical or verbally abusive. No one should be with a person who can't control their anger. Because at some point, that anger has a high chance of turning on you, and instead of a wall, it will be your face. Unless he goes to anger management and is in therapy, do not marry this man. Do not have children with him. Listen to your gut and remove yourself from this relationship for your safety. Update. Two months later. Thank you to everyone who commented on my previous post. It's been a while since my original post, and a lot has happened. The end of the relationship was nothing short of a soap opera. I spent nights in bed next to him on our holiday, reading Lundy Bancroft's book, and I was floored. All the comments were so eye-opening, even if I didn't want to believe it was that serious. So many things were hitting home. There were so many things I didn't consider abuse. But these were things I wasn't telling friends or family about. I was protecting him from anyone knowing what he was really like. A part of the book referenced cheating and abusers as one archetype that matched a lot of my partner's attributes. I thought I was crazy, but over a week after we got home from our holiday, he got home from work, we had dinner, and he went to shower, so I checked his phone. I repeated this for quite a few nights, gathering evidence. He has been cheating on me and lots of different women over the last three years. And currently, there is one woman who knows all about me and likes to talk about how awful I am with him. A lot of things he thought he deleted that messenger archived. I eventually confronted him one of those nights when he was coming to bed, and he told me he was too tired to talk about it, that I invaded his privacy, and that they were just friends. I was so angry that I pushed it in terms of keeping the conversation going, not physically. He said he wanted to sleep, and I said if I wasn't getting any sleep, he wasn't either. He snapped. He punched a hole in the wall. He broke our dresser it's destroyed. He went into the kitchen, and he smashed other things. It was terrifying. I was begging him to stop. 
He then said I was lucky something of his wasn't broken. I said why? What does that mean? He said he would have unlived me. It's more graphic, but I'm not sure if I can post it here. I got my things, snuck into my car, and went to a friend. He called me and said not to bother coming home. I wasn't. Why would I? The next day, he said it was all my fault because I wouldn't let him walk away, that I was a moron, and that I ruined everything. I should have let him sleep and waited until the morning. I called my brothers and said I needed to get my things. I decided it wasn't a good idea for them to come yet, because I think they would have escalated the situation, as they were angry too. I took my sister and friend and had them wait in the car until I was sure it was safe. He wasn't meant to be home but was. They said I had five minutes until they were coming in. I told him I'd come to get my things, but he got emotional and said he never wanted me to see that side of him. I said we were done, and he got angry again and chased me into the garage, throwing pillows at me. He said I would regret not fighting for this, and I asked him what I was fighting for because this wasn't how you treat someone you love. He collapsed into a crying mess and said he loved me too much and needed me, that he'd been an idiot and ruined it all. He said I could take what I wanted and that he would speak to me tomorrow when we'd both slept. He got upset when my friend and sister came inside, because he didn't know they knew. I took the opportunity to get clothes, and my brothers returned for my things two days later. He sobbed on the phone to me to remind me that he wasn't getting attention from me, and did the wrong thing, that he's really stressed, and it all came to a head. He also told me this would happen to me again, and the devil I knew was better than any other. He was begging me to come home. I made contact. Three weeks later. He's posting pictures with one of the other women, and in a relationship with her. I'm just floored by the turn-in of events. Thank you to everyone who commented. This man was an abuser, and writing here saved me. Please don't date angry men. Please realize that if there's physical violence of any kind, they're capable of worse. The cheating was a bullet I didn't see coming. I never suspected him of that ever in the whole three years, and I'm extremely embarrassed about being replaced so easily and being fooled so easily. I'm living with my brother. My self-esteem is in the toilet, and I guess I'm starting my life over again now. Comments. Remember Towel Day 525. Welcome to a new life. Wipe the slate clean, but keep the lessons learned. I am proud of you for standing up for yourself. It took me 10 years. You did it in 3. OP very close to 4 to be honest. It was still very hard to let go. I was so traumatized by him. It's still a work in progress. Angels won. It's not that it was easy to replace you and there is nothing wrong with you. People like him need to always be with someone. Notice how he has multiple women there as backups. He can't handle not just being alone, but not having someone fulfill the role that makes him feel good about himself. All the while, he tears that person down. As you said, trauma bonds them. I'm really sorry. I've been in an abusive relationship. It's really hard, and it hurts. But I promise it gets better. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, We've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.